So here are a couple of more um, quite simple tools for uh, dealing with uh, plain text files. Um, the first couple of these you could even implement in set, but these are popular because they have a much simpler manual, so it's easier to get started with using them. Grep is a line filter. You provide it with either standard input or a list of files, and then it will output only those lines in those files that match a particular pattern. The name grep doesn't mean anything other than in some very old editor that particular sequence of letters was an equivalent, had an equivalent function. Um, you can specify in pattern also a regular expression similar to set. There are in fact three different versions of grep. There is also fgrep and egrep. fgrep doesn't do regular expression. The pattern is always just interpreted as a character string. Um, fgrep has a couple of more meta characters that if you use them in grep you would have to prefix with a backslash sign. As I mentioned some of those tools differ a little bit on what is considered a meta character and what isn't, but otherwise have a very similar regular expression syntax. The equivalent of the exclamation mark in set to negate whether the pattern matches or not, you can do with a minus V. Um, <clears throat> also a very useful option to remember is, if for example you look for a word in a text, it may be capitalized, option minus I makes the match case insensitive. But remember what I said about locale uh, environment variables. Um, how exactly case is mapped depends on which country the locale is from. Uh, one curious example, the Turkish language, for example, has both an I with and without a dot. So the lowercase I with dot maps to the uppercase character I with a dot, whereas the I loses its dot if it's turned from lowercase to uppercase in an English locale. Uh, often you want to have a look at uh, just the first or last couple of lines and there are separate commands head and tail that do this. Both of these here give you either the first 25 lines or the last 25 lines of a file. But they can do a couple of other things. They can not only output the first couple of lines but also the first couple of bytes. So you can trim binary files, for example, where you know there's a 128 byte header at the start of the raw data that you want to get rid of. Uh, these tools can also be used for that purpose. One particular curious uh, extension of tail you get with option minus F, then tail doesn't terminate. Instead, it checks the length of the file about once a second. And if the file has been grown, growing since it looked last time, then it will output more lines. So this is very useful if you have a background process where you've output, uh, for example, the progress of that background uh, process into a file. So you have a continuously growing file and you want to monitor on your terminal what's being uh, printed into that file, uh, then um, tail minus F is your friend. There's also another command called T that like the cat command, just uh, provides the standard input, is uh, passed on to standard output, um, but or T reads the standard input and writes it into a file, but also at the same time uh, provides it to standard output. So you can write something both into a log file as well as watch it on the terminal that sometimes uh, fulfills a similar purpose to tail minus F. Another file that comes in occasionally handy is uh, sort. You just provide sort and a file name and you get all the lines alphabetically sorted. And there's lots of options. You can select a particular column that you want to uh, sort from if it's more a table file format. Um, and if there's a field separator, if you have, for example, a file that is where there are columns, values uh, separated by a colon or a vertical bar, um, then you can specify the separator. Um, numbers sort differently uh, from text string. In a text string, for example, the number 2 is greater than the number 10 because it 
makes a decision based on the first character that it sees, whereas in numeric sorting you first have to look at the length of the entire number. A longer number, if you exclude leading digits, uh, leading zeros, uh, will be larger, and only if two numbers are of the same size then you do string comparison. Um, <clears throat> another very useful option is to eliminate duplicate lines, uh, and you can also reverse the order, and if you want to bring a bit more variety in your life, and then you can randomize all the lines uh, also with sort. So it has a number of options for permuting the lines in a file. Um, cut can be useful if you have a file, again, that's really a sort of a table format, and you want to extract just a couple of columns. As a trivial example, with get and password, you get the user database of a Unix system. And if you only want to have the first and the third column of that table, um, this user database file is output with the colon as the column separator, then the cut command will give you this. One very common requirement that Tripos students have is when they write their dissertation, uh, then they have to be within a word count limit. So there is a command wc that counts the number of words and with options also the number of lines or the number of bytes or characters in an input file. To actually do this, uh, you may also have to remove some um, meta syntax from your file format. So there are various tools available. If you use, for example, uh, the LaTeX typesetting tool, you first want to convert LaTeX into plain text, uh, into a, a plain text file format, and then you apply WC to count the number of words. Also useful is if you have a tool for doing some uh, spell checking, especially if you're dealing with uh, plain text files. There are spell checking tools built into uh, various editors that you can call, but you can also use a command line tool. The one I quite like is known as A-Spell. That's a sort of modernized version of an older tool called I-Spell. And the way I normally use it is if I have a very long document, I don't really want to go through all the names and acronyms and other things that uh, no spelling dictionary uh, knows. I really want to see each uh, word that isn't known to the spell checking dictionary once. And the way I achieve this is I feed my, for example, dissertation.tech file uh, into standard input of a spell list, and that will only output uh, words that it doesn't know. It will remove some of the uh, meta syntax of that file format. So, for example, LaTeX macros will be recognized and uh, ignored. Um, you can specify some other file formats with similar functions. HTML is probably the most useful one. And then I sort the output. So all the words that haven't been recognized, I want to see each non-recognized word only once. So I do a unique sort to eliminate duplicate lines. And I sort in the ASCII sorting order, such that all the uppercase words come first, because these are typically uh, names and therefore not known by the dictionary. So I ignore all of these. And then I only look at the second half of the file, all the uh, lowercase characters. And with this, I can very quickly spot um, typos in uh, spelling mistakes in a very long document. And it's I find it much faster than if I have to interactively go through every single non-recognized word as some uh, editors offer me to do this. <clears throat>